Hello and welcome to another lecture where I'll show you how you can prepare a smart document in your subject. Now what is a smart document? This is an example of a smart document. I call it smart because as soon as my students receive it, they are able to navigate between the question and the solution to the question very fast. For instance, this document shows the subject, the topic that we are dealing with, the instructions that the student has to follow, and questions. Define pressure, for example. And if the student wants to know the answer to that, all the student needs to do is click that and the, stu the answer is displayed here. And then the student can go to the next question, repeat the procedure, check the answer, go to the next question, check the answer, and so forth. You can see that the process of Getting the answer to a given question is very, very fast. The student does not waste time scrolling from one page to the next, looking for the answer to a particular question. The student just needs to click on a given link on the document and the answer is displayed. And then the student can go to the next question. Another way of using this document is by using this navigation pane here. I can put away the navigation pane, but by clicking this icon here, it reveals this bookmark section. I've put this bookmark so that the student can go to question number one, answer the question, and then the student can click this and the answer to the question is displayed. So two ways of using this document, using the navigation pane or using the document itself inside here. The method to use is up to the discretion of the student, but I would propose that you advise your students not to use the navigation pane first unless they want to skip through any question of their choice. A student can answer question one and then the next question could be question number seven. Don't advise them to use that method first because your intention is that they answer all the questions. You can see that when the bookmark section is not displayed, the student is prompted to go to the next question. Check the answer and then go to the next question. Check the answer, next question. This way, the student does not skip any of the question. The student can go all the way up to the end. Question number 10, where the student now is prompted to go back to the beginning. As soon as they have used that method, you can advise them now to use the bookmark section to identify the questions of their choice. You know, probably where they had most difficulties. You can advise them to use that first method and then as soon as they are through with that, to use the second method. I'm going to show you how to prepare this document from a template. I've designed the template so that as soon as you download the template from the video description, by the way, I've provided this template for your download in the video description. So just go right there, download it, extract it, and then use Microsoft Word to open it. And here, I'm going to show you how you go about editing the various sections and then how you eventually get a PDF format of your document. So let's go to the template where I'll show you how to go about this process. So over here, you can see that I have already filled in the template, but the template that I will send you, it will not be showing physics. It will be showing something else. It will just display this. Click here to enter text. And as soon as you click that, you will enter your subject. And then click here to enter either a topic or a subtopic. And then when it comes to the question part, this part here will not be there. There will just be a space here where you can put your cursor and type your question. So remember the template that you're going to receive does not have the subject, the topic. Probably it has the instructions, which you can also change depending on what you want. And when it comes to the questions, they're just a blank spaces for you to enter the question. I would propose that you don't do anything to these parts here where I've put the links. Don't touch those. Just leave them as they are. Now, when you open the document, 
you'll go to this tab here, view, and then you go to this checkbox here, navigation pane. Ensure that it is checked because if it is not checked, it does not reveal this navigation. This navigation is very, very important because it allows you to work on the question and its answer simultaneously. Let's say, for example, you are editing question number one. You will click it on the navigation pane. Question number one will be here. The moment you click that space, you can type your question. If your question is long enough, then you will find that this space actually expands. You can see that. It gives you a large space where to type your question. As soon as you have typed your question, you can click answer to question one. Just click that and the space where you have to write the answer to the question will be displayed. Like I said, this section will not uh, be there. Let me just remove it. It will, you'll just have a space where you can put your cursor and st start typing the answer to that question. And you can do the same with question number two, question number three, and so forth. Now, what will happen if the number of questions you have are not up to 10? Maybe they are up to 5. All you need to do is just delete those questions. You will delete them from the navigation pane. This is what I will advise. Suppose you have 5 questions instead of 10. So, you will have to delete 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Leaving 1, 2, 3, 4 and number 10. Once you have deleted 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you will have to edit question number 10 to read 5. For example, if I click it, you will just come here and change that 10 to 5. There, you can see I have changed it to 5. And the moment I change it here, it also changes on the navigation pane. Very, very easy. Then when it comes to answer to question 10, it will, uh, of course, be answer to question 5. So I have 5, then I delete those two. Remember, by that, we mean that you have deleted 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. As soon as you delete them, they just disappear from here. For instance, left click, right click, Select Heading and Content and then press Delete. You can see it disappears from here and it also disappears from here. It's very easy. So if you want to delete any of the questions from this template, use the navigation pane. It gives you a very neat way of deleting. Left click, right click, select Heading and Content, press delete and so forth. Now let's go to saving your document. Now this template is meant to be used over and over again. So I would propose that you retain the original document in its original form. That means that as soon as you have edited that document, you're going to save it under a different name. So you'll go to file, save as, and then over here, change the name of that document. The moment you change the name of the document and you click save, you're going to have two files. The new file that you have edited and the original document remains as it was. So that you can use it over and over again. Point number two when you are saving is this. The document that you're going to send to the student is not a word document because you do not want them to change anything in that document. So you want to send them a PDF format of your document. How do you do that? While you're st still on save, let me say uh, this document, I want to call it, um, let me just change it to physics, something like that. So you'll go to the file type, click on that arrow, then go to PDF, click on it, and then go to the options. You'll want to make sure that this section here is checked, the headings is checked, 
Otherwise, if you don't do that, it will not have the bookmarks. And then you will say OK. And then save. And immediately you have a neat PDF of your file. Let's go to the bookmarks. Over there, let's see whether we have the changes that you had made. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can see we deleted 8 and we deleted, I think, question number... No, we changed question number 10 to read as 5. You remember that? So the bookmarks will appear exactly as they were in the Word document. When it comes to the answers again, there are a few things that we did over there. So there will be this navigation here as well as this other one here. So this time, remember we never did anything to this section here. You, When you're working on your document, you'll have to enter your own subject there and so forth. And you can see the links work very, very well. Check the answer. Next question. Check the answer. Next question. All the way up to the last question. Whereby now, as soon as the student answers the last question, he or she is prompted to go back to the beginning. You can see that this document can be very helpful to your students, especially this time that there is no contact between the teachers and the students. And you want the student to attempt questions and check the answers all by themselves. You want to make it very easy for them. So this document allows them to get the answer to a particular question just by a click of a button. And when they are taken to a different page, they don't lose the rhythm because there will be another link which tells them to go to the next question. So go right ahead and download your, um, uh, download the template from the video description below. And uh, if you have any question, you can write it in the comments below. And by the way, if you this is your first time on this channel, I would appreciate if you go right ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you are immediately notified.